secret that was told to me by one of the very first astronauts. And he kept the secret for more than 40 years. Neil deGrasse Tyson, a famous scientist who studies space, excitedly said, the space object called Awama has come back to our solar system. What's more, it seems it has not come back alone. The special space object, Awalma, holds a lot of intrigue and has made a lot of scientists curious as it quickly moved through our solar system during its last visit. Its surprising and strange path had scientists guessing what it really was. Could it be just a normal space rock? Could it be a space object filled with gas? Or could it be a spaceship sent by aliens from another world? One of the things that made Awalma's trip to the solar system special was how fast that it moved. The speed suggested that it was moving in a way that let it escape the pull from our solar system's gravity. This high speed made some space scientists and fans wonder if there could be a spaceship from a far off, unknown place. This idea that Amwama could be a device sent by alien beings has started a big discussion and guesswork amongst scientists. So, as Neil deGrasse Tyson asks us to do often, let's go on a journey together into space to study and find out the mystery of Amwama. Back in October 2017, something extraordinary happened in our solar system. The Pan Stars 1 telescope, nestled atop Haleakala in Hawaii, discovered the first known interstellar traveler in our vicinity, and it was named Aumalma, or 1I-2017 U1 in formal terms, if you're boring. Why Aumalma? It's a word in the Hawaiian language translating to a messenger from afar arriving first, a name that beautifully captures the essence of this distant cosmic traveler. The mysterious visitor was a reddish, cigar-shaped object, an apparent composition of rock. It measured up to a quarter mile in length and about one-tenth of that in width, Portions unheard of when compared to asteroids and comets in our solar system. This elongated form of Amwama is a source of fascination. It provides a unique window into the formation and evolution of other solar systems. One might be wondering, could Amwama just be a stray object from the Kuiper Belt? Neil deGrasse Tyson has an easy answer to this question. According to him, the decisive factor is the object's speed. When an object moves too swiftly to be contained by the sun's gravitational pull, it indicates that the object has origins outside of our solar system. When Awama whisked past Earth, it was clocking a speed of 196,000 miles per hour. Put that into perspective, that's 109 times the speed of a bullet, providing irrefutable proof that Awama is not from our cosmic backyard. For a long time, the debate raged on on whether Awama was an asteroid or a comet. At first glance, it may seem trivial, but it isn't. Comets are composed of ice, while asteroids are made up of rocks. The distinction is crucial in understanding the celestial object's origin and the forces that shaped its journey. On September 9th of 2017, after Amwama zipped past the sun, scientists reclassified it from a comet to an asteroid. This classification was based on its speed and trajectory, but the mystery deepened when subsequent observations revealed an unanticipated acceleration, characteristics more common in comets than in asteroids. To this day, the reason for Amwama's unexpected speed boost remains a puzzle. The unusual path Amwama followed intrigued scientists around the world, prompting intense observation during the brief window it was visible. The findings added more layers to the enigma. Scientists couldn't find any dust or comet trail, and the object had a reddish hue, akin to objects in our solar system's outer reaches. The object's age was also calculated through careful observation. Awala had spent hundreds of millions of years adrift in space before finally making its journey into our galaxy. As Awala left our solar system, it sped up, defying the laws of gravity. Its acceleration was reminiscent of comets when they orbit far from the sun. When solar heat melts the ice on a comet, it lightens the body and it propels it forward. However, Amwama's acceleration and trajectory didn't align with the established scientific understanding, stirring up a flurry of questions about its unique path and origins. Ever since its discovery in 2017, Amwama has been made the hotbed of scientific discussion. Theories abound, ranging from it being a solid block of hydrogen that turns into gas as it nears a star, providing propulsion, to it having a built-in ion propulsion system. Initially, some scientists believed it to be disc-shaped due to its outward velocity as it passed the sun. However, many astronomers have likened its behavior to comets, given their ubiquity in our solar system. Amwama derived from a Hawaiian word meaning scout, or, you know, what I said earlier, but also, you know, scout, it is the first confirmed interstellar object to visit our solar system. Its peculiar behavior and unusual shape have led to some astonishing theories about its origin, sparking a scientific conversation that stretches the boundaries of our understanding. One of the most striking characteristics of Amwama is its shape. Often illustrated as a cigar-like figure due to our limited perspective, it's believed that Amwama might actually be more disc-like. This peculiar form factor, akin to a pancake, represents an intriguing question. Could this object, seemingly so different from anything we've observed before, be a product of an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization? 
In a scientific paper published in October 2018, Dr. Shmuel Bailey and Professor Avi Loeb proposed a fascinating explanation for Amwalma's peculiar acceleration. They suggested that radiation pressure, a force exerted by the sun on an object, could explain its unexpected velocity changes. They argued that Awama's characteristics, its unusual shape and highly reflective nature, resemble that of a light sail, a method of spacecraft propulsion that uses radiation pressure from stars to push ultra-thin mirrors to high speeds. Awama's mysterious visitation to our solar system had a distinct pattern that eerily resembles a deliberate trajectory. After coming as close to the sun as possible, Awama passed by Earth, showcasing orbital and dynamics similar to an interstellar probe. These puzzling observations fueled the idea that Awama might be more than just an anomalous space rock. Understandably, such an extraordinary claim sparked some controversy. News outlets started amplifying the theory, suggesting that Professor Loeb and his colleague believed Awama to be of extraterrestrial origin. Critics voiced their skepticism, arguing that such a theory seemed unscientific, questioning why a reputable professor like Loeb would entertain such an outlandish idea. Yet, Professor Loeb stood resolute amidst the controversy. Unfazed by the criticism, he went a step further and wrote a book detailing his journey and the development of his theory. In his writing, Professor Loeb shared his passionate conviction urging both the scientific community and the public to entertain that possibility that Awama might indeed be an extraterrestrial messenger. Is there solid evidence supporting the claim that Awama is a probe sent by an intelligent alien race? To answer this question, we delve into Professor Loeb's book, a comprehensive narration of his journey and his bold claims. The book navigates the enigma of Awama, urging readers to engage the possibility of alien encounters. It presents a compelling narrative, chronicling Professor Loeb's steadfast belief in his groundbreaking theory. As Amwama prepared to exit the solar system, images captured by the Hubble Space Telescope revealed an increase in its speed. The simplest explanation for this sudden acceleration was the solar heating of Amwama's surface, a process known as outgassing, similar to a comet's behavior. Yet, Bayali and Loeb emphasized that such a phenomenon should have left an unmistakable trail, which was absent in Amwama's case. Adding to the mystery, Amwama exhibited no tail during its closest approach to the sun, defying conventional wisdom of cometary behavior. Its unexpected acceleration and the absence of a noticeable change in its spin further complicated their understanding of this celestial object. The duo hypothesized that radiation pressure, rather than outgassing, could be the catalyst for this enigmatic acceleration. This begs the question, what could it be if Aumama is neither a comet nor an asteroid? What could possibly explain its strange actions? In this cosmic conundrum, one thing was clear. Aumama was like nothing else that we had observed before. The mysterious Amwama defied conventional explanations. Despite scientists' best attempts to attribute its oddities to natural phenomena, all of the proposed theories fell short. There was no single comprehensive explanation for its brightness, its shape, its velocity, I mean, especially when considering the absence of observable outgassing. Professor Avi Loeb had a big idea. He wanted to make a spaceship that could go to the Alpha Centauri system, which is the closest star system to ours. He wanted to do it while we're still alive. This idea was very bold, and it seemed almost impossible. He and his team mulled over various possibilities, pondering and theorizing. They knew they needed something extraordinarily powerful, and finally decided on a light sail, a sail-like object which could be propelled by the pressure of light hitting it, powered by an immensely powerful 100-gigawatt laser. Such a device, they speculated, could potentially reach speeds bordering that of light itself. Interestingly, they also thought that this spacecraft could be miniaturized, mirroring the size and weight of a mere smartphone. This hybrid concept, a mingling of light sail and a starship, they aptly named Starshot, a vivid representation of their aspirations to shoot for the stars, literally and, you know, figuratively. A rather peculiar incident would soon inspire Loeb even further. This was the arrival of Amwama, the first interstellar object to visit our solar system. In the midst of reminiscing about Starshot, Loeb saw a potential connection between the two. A somewhat novel idea began to take shape, the idea of an interstellar probe. However, before leaping to conclusions, the team wanted to ensure the validity of their hypothesis. They examined the potential dimensions of this probe, its material composition, its thickness, its reflective properties. Surprisingly, every sign pointed towards a conclusion that defied conventional thinking. Amwama was perhaps not a product of natural cosmic processes, but rather man-made. Or rather, alien-made. <laughs> Loeb and his fellow researcher, Shmuel Bailey, asserted that their proposition about the light sail wasn't a wild, uncalculated guess, but a systematic and logical deduction of the evidence at hand. Much like the famous detective Sherlock Holmes, they employed a fundamental scientific principle. If all probabilities are, or possibilities are ruled out, whatever remains, no matter how far-fetched it may seem, has to be the truth. The Sherlockian principle led them to boldly propose that Awama could potentially be a man-made spacecraft. As one might expect, such an intriguing theory was bound to elicit strong responses. 
One of the more prominent figures who reacted was the renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, who has known Loeb for a long time and he actually holds him in high regard. Tyson found it intriguing that Loeb had ventured into the realm of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, advocating for more resources to be allocated towards it. Despite a seemingly widespread desire for additional funding within the scientific community, the question remained as to why that was necessary. Loeb's alien spacecraft theory didn't convince the majority of his peers, yet it resonated strongly with him, and he wrote a book on it that generated significant public interest. Tyson, much like Loeb, is a believer in the potential existence of alien life forms. He shares the same thrill, the same curiosity about the prospect, but cautions against attributing every mystery to extraterrestrials. While acknowledging Loeb's extensive research, he proposed that there might be other avenues for investigation that were just overlooked. He argued that although Loeb put forward his theory passionately, the information available at the time was insufficient to reach that conclusion. During an interview with Star Talk, Tyson discussed the enduring mystery of Aumama's ultra trajectory as it neared the sun. He highlighted how deviations from the expected path, as determined by gravity, indicate the presence of an unknown force. Tyson suggested alternative explanations, like the idea that Aumama might have lost its ice content as it neared the sun, leading to that change in directory. But he firmly stated that he wasn't ready to attribute this to alien intervention and cautioned against jumping to conclusions. In 2020, an intriguing theory emerged that suggested Aumama could be a hydrogen iceberg. This theory offered a potential explanation for the object's molecular structure and origin. According to this theory, Aumama could have been propelled like a rocket by a jet of pure hydrogen gas. As we venture further into the unknown, theories like these keep our curiosity alive in the never-ending quest to understand our little universe. Now, scientists got real excited when they first heard about the hydrogen iceberg theory. And, you know, me being the smartest scientist in North America was excited too. But as we looked at it more closely, we started to see some complicated things that made us question if the theory could actually work and how such an iceberg could even be made. In the world of academia, researchers from the esteemed Harvard University and Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute took the helm, publishing a paper that cast a shadow of doubt over the once promising theory. One of the most vocal skeptics was none other than Professor Avi Loeb or Avi Loeb. A variety of issues were identified with the hydrogen iceberg theory. Chief among them was a flaw rooted in the understanding of the regular formation processes of solid bodies. It appeared that such processes simply couldn't give rise to an iceberg of this nature, a significant problem that undermined the very foundation of the theory. In September 2020, however, an entirely different idea made its way to the forefront, posing a novel comparison of the elongated celestial object to something more mundane, a dust bunny. Those seemingly innocuous clumps of dust and particles that congregate under furniture due to static electricity were suddenly thrust into a cosmic context. Scientists suggested that Amwama could be considered a scaled-up version of one of these domestic dust balls. Their hypothesis posited that Amwama may have originated from an interstellar comet, the dust from which coalesced to form the peculiar rock. Once formed, the aggregation was thought to have been thrust into the cosmos by the sun's radiation, marking a fleeting tour of our solar system. Speculations also pointed towards Amwama being a product of a long-period comet. Such comets are characterized by their extended orbits around stars, often venturing considerable distances due to weak gravitational pulls and radiation pressure. Following its detachment from its parent comet, Aumama embarked on a journey into interstellar space, briefly intersecting with our solar system. While this explanation seems to fit the facts, the quest for a more convincing theory persisted. In a surprising turn of events, after a four-year-long investigation involving multiple theories and some pretty significant brain power, the astronomical community seemed to have found a satisfactory explanation. In March of 2021, two papers were published that suggested our extrasolar visitor could be a substantial chunk of nitrogen ice, cast off from an exoplanet similar to Pluto in a far-off solar system. This nitrogen iceberg theory provided a more natural explanation for Amwama's behavior, countering earlier theories that posited it as a rocky planetary fragment ripped apart by its host star. The new findings seemed to effectively debunk the alien theories that had sprung up following Amama's discovery. Initially met with skepticism, the nitrogen iceberg theory turned out to satisfy several critical criteria, gaining credence amongst independent astronomers. Even so, the investigation was so far from over. Researchers proceeded to examine how various types of ice, composed of hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, would behave under the same conditions. Unexpectedly, they found that a large chunk of nitrogen ice displayed the same properties as Amama. This presented a new challenge, as measuring nitrogen gas with available telescopes proved problematic. Further studies suggested that Amwama possessed a tail-like feature, as one might expect from a comet. However, due to its nitrogen composition, we were unable to detect it. These investigations led to the identification of potential sources of nitrogen icebergs. Among the bodies that harbor nitrogen ice on their surfaces are Pluto and Triton, Neptune's moon. 
These celestial bodies residing on the outskirts of solar systems may just be the birthplace of the mysterious visitors like Amwama. In two groundbreaking academic papers, the writers ventured an intriguing theory. They painted a vivid picture of a violent past in the distant reaches of the universe, suggesting that in the nascency of a remote solar system, celestial bodies clashed in monumental events of a cosmic scale. These planetary skirmishes, they believed, were not just random occurrences. These were essential, defining moments of life in the solar system. The violent meeting of planetary bodies give birth to the building blocks of future celestial inhabitants, etching indelible marks into the very fabric of the cosmic entity that we now identify as a solar system. The authors imagined one such cataclysm, a planetary collision of gargantuan proportions giving rise to a unique event. They hypothesized that amidst the maelstrom of such a collision, a substantial piece, a chunk of pure nitrogen, was ripped apart from its planetary body. It's hard to, you know, get proper scale and use your imagination to but just try and imagine the power and the energy involved in this process, an event so potent that it rips off a significant mass of a solid body of a planet, forcing it into the bleak emptiness of space. This nitrogenous fragment was not destined to oblivion, though. Over the course of countless millennia, the vagrant chunk underwent a stunning transformation. It gradually coalesced, turning from a disjointed random fragment into a cohesive, singular entity. The chunk of nitrogen morphed into a distinct celestial body, a piece of cosmic flotsam set adrift in the dark expanse of space. The authors christened this newfound entity Amwama, borrowing a word from the Hawaiian language, meaning scout or messenger from afar. It was an apt name, a poetic testament to the object's long and solitary journey across the cosmic wilderness. But Amwama's tale doesn't end with this information, of course. Quite the opposite. The heart of the story lies in its propulsion. Amwama is not simply a drift left to the whims of gravitational poles, it travels purposefully, driven by some mysterious force, an impetus that remains tantalizingly elusive to our understanding. This force, this unexplained cosmic catalyst, propels Amwama on its journey, granting it a velocity beyond the mere pull of the galaxies that it navigates. The authors proposed a hypothesis that Amwama is a nitrogen iceberg. Now that is plausible, and it's a natural explanation for the peculiar, unanticipated behaviors of Amwama. It really helps to demystify the cosmic entity, providing an inkling into its unique trajectory and velocity. Yet we gotta remember that this theory, like Amwama itself, is a product of the vast cosmic frontier, of immensely complex and largely unfathomable phenomena. As such, further investigation and study are imperative. Despite the allure of the nitrogen iceberg theory, it must withstand the crucible of scientific scrutiny. And Awama is not the only visitor. There's a comet called 2i slash Borisov that's easier to understand than other space stuff. This comet is special because it's the first one that we've seen that comes from another star system. Like comets in our own solar system, it's made of water, dust, and something called carbon monoxide. It also has a tail, which is what scientists expected to see. This comet helps show how strange Awama, another space object, is. Scientists think 2i slash Borisov came from a place where a type of star called the Red Dwarf used to be. These stars are dim and very common in our galaxy. Some smart people from all over the world think that it might have come from a part of space where there's a white dwarf star named Ross 573. This star is a long ways away, about 629 trillion miles from our sun. They think that a big crash happened in the star's neighborhood about 900,000 years ago, and that is what said 2i slash Borisov off into space. But a scientist named Jackson ain't so sure. He thinks that the comet has been traveling for too long to figure out exactly where it came from. Even though it looks like comets from our solar system, we can't tell for sure which star system it originally came from. However, because it looks you know, so similar to our comets, it was probably born in a comet cloud in its home star system. As we look to unravel Amwama's mysteries, we must acknowledge the fluid nature of our understanding. The theories that we harbor today may evolve tomorrow as new information and observations come to light. The enigma that is Amwama serves as a humbling reminder of our universe's vast, unexplored territories an invitation to continue seeking, questioning, and learning. How has Awama's discovery impacted our understanding of extraterrestrial life? Let us know in the comments, hit that like button, and subscribe for more! Okay, goodbye.